Hello everyone, welcome to our Patshala Studio Archives on YouTube. You can aim to assist you master the skills of Asari and DevOps in AWS. This video is part of our Patshala Studio series on the various components or services on AWS Cloud. So let's get started. Today we would continue to look into scaling out and scaling in on Amazon Web Services. Um, in the previous two videos of this uh, series, uh, we have seen what scaling out and scaling in is. We have seen how scaling out and scaling in is done manually on AWS. Today we would see at an automated scenario where in we could do scale out and scale in automatically without any manual intervention in the server provisioning process. For this, uh, we would need a load balancer, so we are still using the same load balancer that we had in the previous video, which is, is our classical load balancer. We would need a launch configuration or a launch template. Currently, we are going with the launch configuration. I'll quickly create that which is CPB00 uh, web and C stands for launch configuration uh, in order to get the EC2 instance details uh, I quickly go and try to create a new EC2 instance and copy the copy the AMI ID from here which is which is this this is the AMI that we would be using so we are using an Amazon Linux 2 EC2 instance I will select the type I would go with a T2 I'll go with a T2 micro because that is enough for our application application to work uh, we will not be selecting any instance profiles or um, we are not requesting for any uh, launch details. Uh, I'll quickly add the user data over here. User data is the automated script uh, that we would put in the uh, put in during the provisioning so that it would do the installation automatically on the server. Uh, we would be selecting the storage and we would be selecting the security group which we would like the EC2 instance to have when it is created. The key pair is also selected and I will click on create the launch configuration. Now once the launch configuration has been created, we will go ahead and create auto scaling group. The process of creating an auto scaling group is very similar to that of the launch configuration. Uh, so we will switch to launch configuration and we will select the launch configuration that we created earlier. As you see, all the details related to the EC2 instance, that is the AMI, the type of EC2 instance, and the security group in which we are creating the EC2 instance is automatically provided to us. We would then be selecting the VPC in which we want to create the security auto scaling groups, and then we would also select the subnets in which we want our EC2 instances to be created. I click on next, and here we could select the load balancers so that the EC2 instances are directly assigned or attached behind a load balancer when the group is created. So we would select the health check to be with the load balancer so that would help us uh, get better understanding of the service. Uh, the next part is uh, something called as a desired capacity, a minimum capacity and a maximum capacity. We would leave it as it is for now and proceed with the next section with this desired capacity equal to one we will get one ec2 instance created uh, once the auto scaling group comes into functionality we also have some scaling policies which which we can define to see if uh, the cpu load on the server goes more than 90 percent we could ask auto scaling group uh, to add one server to the fleet and we could also uh, create scale out policies or scale in policies wherein we could have uh, 
the EC2 instances being reduced by one when the threshold comes down. We will not be going into the scaling policy in this video, uh, whereas we would be going with uh, a manual way of changing the design capacity. I'll not be adding any notifications, and uh, we would definitely be adding a name tag, and the name tag would be replicated on the on EC2 instances as well. So once everything is created, all we have to do is create the auto scaling group. And uh, if you look into the auto scaling group, into the activity section of it, we would see that an EC2 instance is being launched as we speak. Now, if I copy the EC2 instance and go to the EC2 control, I would be able to see the EC2 instance coming up. We should be able to see the EC2 instance coming up. And this EC2 instance should also be popping up on our load balancer when it comes into the running state. So let's wait for the EC2 instance to come to the running state, which it has, which it has now, and we should be able to see the EC2 being added into the load balancer automatically by the auto-scaling group. So as we see, uh, the server has been added, but then uh, it is currently out of service. We would have to wait for the server to come and come into the in-service mode, and then we would be able to access our application. As of now, if I try to access uh, the application, I would be getting a page uh, getting another page uh, that the site is not working and it's being denied with a 503 error but if we keep refreshing uh, the page and as and when the status comes into in service we should be able to see the website so as we see uh, the instance has already come into in service and if i try to access the website now i should be able see our uh, demo page on from the code balancer. Now in order to increase the number of servers uh, all we have to do is uh, have a maximum capacity defined so let's put a maximum capacity of 100 and then let's increase the EC2 instances uh, to 2 wherein uh, what would now happen is a new EC2 instance would be provisioned in the activity section, we should be able to see that a new server is uh, being created. We see that the new EC2 instance is being created and this would also be added behind the load balancer when it comes into running state. I could filter the servers with the tags. So the tag says name equals to CP web server so this so if you see uh, there are already two servers running into this and uh, if I refresh the page I should be seeing the second EC2 instance added to the load balancer though it is currently in the out of service state now in order to increase uh, in order to have more servers added into the uh, behind the load balancer, right? All we have to do is increase the desired capacity. And this part can also be automated in such a way that uh, we could increase the number, uh, we could increase the desired capacity to any number using the command line interface or the API keys that we have. So if so, if you're anticipating more traffic at a particular given time. Uh, something like an IRTC, IRCTC website where uh, millions of uh, lakhs of people access the website on a particular time or uh, during the day we could uh, pre-provision all the servers to maybe 90 maybe 90 servers and uh, update this what would happen is uh, a fleet of 90 a 
fleet of servers would be created so we already have two servers so that means uh, we would have another 88 servers getting added into the auto scaling group and if i reload my ec2 instance page you would see that there are 90 servers that are currently being provisioned uh, so that we it could handle the traffic accordingly if you look at the load balancer it would still have two ec2 instances because none of the other ec2 instances have come to the running state uh, as and when the ec2 instances come into the running state we would also see them being added into our load balancer in this entire scenario right our application is still accessible uh, without any challenges and uh, we could wait for all our ec2 instances to come into in service wherein we would be able to access the application seamless so this is how we see so this is how scaling out is done in an automated way using auto scaling rules on aws uh, we could be we are now able to see that most of our servers have already come into in service state and there are only two servers which are yet to come into in service and during this entire during this entire time uh, our website is available seamlessly now if in case uh, in order to decrease the number of instances uh, if uh, the load has come down and we anticipate that very less traffic would continue or uh, we could reduce the number of uh, desired capacity to two which would mean that uh, all the ec2 instance that have been created so far would start to terminate so we could we could we would be able to see the termination happening in a fraction of seconds now so we could go to the activity session of the auto scaling group and we would see that these many instances are now being terminated so if i just quickly run this so i would see a lot of instances being shut down and we would also be terminated in a fraction of time i could see uh, that there are only three instances which are in service as of now so because we have already reduced the number of ec2 instances uh, capacity to two we should also be able to see it coming down further and during this entire time uh, the application is still accessible because the traffic is being served from the remaining instances which are already there in the app so all these ec2 instances are still allowing the traffic to flow so this was scaling out and scaling in automatically on Amazon Web Services using launch configuration and auto scaling groups. Now this is uh, the most widely used uh, concept on a day-to-day -day basis uh, for thousands and thousands of uh, websites who are using Amazon Web Services uh, to host their applications and websites. That's it for this video. I hope you like the content on this. Uh, if you like the video please like and share it with your colleagues if you are not subscribed to the channel please subscribe uh, to the channel and hit the bell icon to get notifications when we have new videos such these thank you so much for watching have a great day